Let us stand for the entrance in. Today is the second Sunday of Advent and we will light the candle of peace. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle in our Advent bread. This first candle reminded us of our hope in Christ. We light it again as we remember our Saviour, born a king in the line of King David. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and we believe that He will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us, to rule the world wisely and bless all nations. Today we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We remember the prophets who spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a Saviour would be born, a king in the line of King David. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace. They told us how He would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. When Christ comes to us, He brings us peace and He will bring everlasting peace when He comes again. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that through Him, peace is found. Peace is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, light, light of, of the world, world the, the prophet said you would bring peace and save your people from trouble. Give, Give peace, peace in our hearts at Christmas time. We ask that, that as we wait for, for you, you to come, come again, that, that you will remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. 
May we walk in the path of peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we step into the second week of Advent, preparing our hearts and minds for the coming of Christ, let us with a humble and contrite heart examine ourselves to seek God's mercy and forgiveness for the times we may have failed to listen to the voice, for the voice stirring in the wilderness of our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for, for me to the Lord, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may, lay, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom give us the admittance to your com company. He who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, Prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. Make a straight highway for our God across the desert. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Let every cliff become a plain and the ridges a valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all mankind shall see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger to Zion. Shout with a loud voice, joyful messenger to Jerusalem. Shout without fear, says to the town, towns of Judah. Here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power, his arm subduing all things to him. The price of his victory is with him. His trophies all go before him. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, holding them against his breast, and leading to their rest the mother youth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. There is one thing, my friends, that you must never forget. That with the Lord, a day can mean a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not being slow to carry out His promises, as anybody else might be called slow. But he is being patient with you all, wanting nobody to be lost and everybody to be brought to change his ways. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then with a roar, the sky will vanish, the elements will catch fire and fall apart, the earth and all it contains will be burned up. Since everything is coming to an end like this, you should be living holy and sinly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat. What we are waiting for is what He promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain, so that He will find you at peace. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Look, I'm going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness. Prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All Judea and all the people of Jerusalem met their way to him. And as they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, they confessed their sins. John wore a garment of camel's skin, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, he said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I'm not fit to kneel down in and to undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. It's the second Sunday of Advent. We step into the week of peace. And as we lit the first candle of hope, we, we also lit the second candle of peace. I believe that deep down in each one of us, there is this yearning, this desire and this prayer for peace. Peace, the gift of peace. Hope leads us to peace. Jesus told his disciples, likewise he tells us, I give you peace, the peace the world can never give you, I give to you. Scripture tells us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the children of God. And as we step into this second Sunday of Advent, we search in the midst of this darkness for this inner peace, this peace that brings about the comfort and the assurance of God's presence. As we step into the second week of Advent, I, I just want to take you back to what I spoke last week, that Advent is all about an anticipation of something that is coming, something that is arriving soon and, and we just have to wait for it. And in the midst of this waiting, there is this excitement, this anticipation of longing and yearning for it. And I said that there are two moments that you can find this. You can be passive or you can be actively waiting. Active waiting. What do you do when you are in this midst of active waiting? Every time when I speak about waiting in scriptures, when I speak about active, I'm taken back to an incident a couple of years back. I'd like to just narrate to you this incident. One of my parishioners met with a very bad accident and they were rushed to the hospital and I was asked if I could anoint him. And as I arrived at the hospital, he was at what we call the emergency room. And I rushed behind the curtains of the emergency room and, and anointed him. And after that rites, and I stepped out of the emergency room, there was another room 
that I had to wait. It's called the emergency waiting room. The emergency waiting room. And I looked at all the faces of everyone in, in that emergency waiting room. Gosh, it was a bit scary. There was a moment of pain, of anguish. All they do was to look at one another. They were on their phones. Some of them were pacing to and fro. Some of them were trying to get a glimpse behind the doors and the curtains of the emergency waiting room. Hoping for a news. The question was, what can we do? What shall we do at this moment? My dear friend, Advent is about the emergency waiting room. We are in the emergency waiting room at this moment. We are waiting. And if you feel that anguish, that moment of what it is at this point, you're at Advent. Because it's a waiting, it's an anticipation, it's a longing, it's a yearning for something that's coming. That's Advent. Lord, we long to see your face. The desire, the yearning for that moment. That's Advent, my dear friends. And to step into that experience of that waiting, you need to listen to that voice. Because in that anguish, in that pain, in that misery, in that emptiness, in that brokenness, in that shattered moment, is the wilderness. And you need to listen to that voice in that wilderness. It speaks very silently and very gently. It's called the voice in the wilderness. It's a voice in the wilderness. You find it in the readings today, the first reading of Isaiah. As you walk, as you step, as you dwell into the history of this period of time, the kings, the rulers, had shattered the dreams of the people. They had failed. And they were looking for a king to take over the reign of Judah. The kings had failed them. Everything was devastated. And Isaiah gave them that voice. Isaiah said, in the midst of your wilderness, of your emptiness, listen. God will send a savior. God will send someone, a root of Jesse, will bring hope to you. We long for that hope, my dear friends, in the wilderness. Peter, in the second reading, echoes it. He tells them, God is not delaying. Just be patient. That's what Peter shows us and admonishes us today. Just be a little patient and God will be there. The Jewish were waiting. The Jews were waiting for a Messiah. And John the Baptist was the voice in the wilderness. This wilderness, my dear friends, is a time of emptiness. It's a desert, as we call it. It's an arid, empty place. It's a space where everything is in a turmoil and chaos. This moment of your pandemic is a wilderness. It's emptiness, my dear friends. I sat back yesterday and when I got the news that every part of Penang was open except Sungai Ara and Mukim 12, I entered back into the wilderness. And I'm still in the wilderness, hoping that when it comes to the 20th, Christmas will be now an open land. It's a wilderness. And we keep asking when, how. Just like the guys in the emergency waiting room, we are asking, what can we do? What shall we do? And it's about listening to that voice, my dear friends. It's listening to that voice. And the voice was, prepare the way. Prepare the way. I have to do something now. It's called active anticipation. I need to prepare the way. I need to look down at my life and ask myself, what is it that's working and what's not working? John the Baptist gives us a glimpse of that. He says, prepare the way and make straight the pathways. Prepare the way and make straight the pathways. In the darkness, I need to see the glimpse of that light. My life may not be right. My marriage may not be right. My family life may not be right. My relationships with people may, may not be right. My thoughts, my emotions may not be right. I may be falling into a form of addiction or habitual life practice. I may have been disrespectful to many things in life. 
My values may not be right. I have lost sense of God and faith. Things may not have been right for the last years and months of my life. Maybe it's time for me to enter into that wilderness and to listen to that voice to prepare the way. What is God asking from me? During this week and the past weeks and in the coming week, the church usually opens its doors to what is called the sacrament of reconciliation. It's a time for us to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, what do I need to do? It's what we call in spiritual life a change of heart. It's all about a change of heart. Greek word metanoia, a change in heart and a change in mind. St. Paul says to put on the mind and the heart of Christ. It's a conversion, it's a repentance, it's a transformation. You name it, it's a moment for us to sit back. And that's what John the Baptist was saying, make straight the path of your life. It's been encouraging for the parish this past few days that a good number of people have just called in and stepped in for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And for me, it's a beautiful blessing to see people who are beginning to look at their path. Sometimes, my dear friends, your path and my path may be cluttered with so many things because we have filmed or finished with many things in life and we just keep going back to the same things. Maybe, maybe it's good for us to go back into the wilderness this next two weeks before Christmas. Maybe it's a time of God's grace. Maybe it's a time for us to change our hearts. Maybe the stubbornness and the hardness of our hearts needs to be softened. Maybe it's the ignorance of our faith that needs to be enlightened. Maybe it's the darkness of our life that needs to be enlightened and to be lit. Because hope leads us to peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are children of God. I invite you, my dear sisters and brothers, as we step into the second week of Advent, the week of peace. There is a cry from within us, but it all begins in the emergency waiting room to listen to that voice in the wilderness of our heart and to prepare that place by the change of our hearts. Let us ask the Lord for that grace in this Eucharist that we may listen to that voice and step into the wilderness. sincere thanks for granting us the means of salvation to your son our lord jesus with utmost trust and praise we appreciate your presence in our lives and we humbly pray the response is oh lord please hear us that through the preaching of our holy father pope francis bishops priests and religious, the Church of God will continue to portray a genuine gospel of the Lord to all his people. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, Lord, please hear us. That in this Advent season, God will mercifully enable Malaysia and all other countries in the world to witness the beginning of an eradication of the coronavirus pandemic that will reflect in the forthcoming new year and transcend through the years to come. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, please hear us. That God will enrich all people with sincere love towards Mother Nature so that every individual will be alert to their sacred duty of combating climate change and preserving the earth for our children and future generations. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, please hear us. That our soon to be baptized, Genevieve A.K. Sophia, will be fully nourished with the strength to persevere in faith and love of God, with the full support and guidance of the chosen people. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, please hear us. That God will compassionately guide his merciful helpers to locate the sick, homeless, and the poorest in the society 
who are at risk of being left out behind in these trying times. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, Lord, please hear us. That all efforts to enable, to enable Christians to stay connected in renewed faith by way of organized online courses be successful as we adjust to the current situation of restricted movements. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, Lord, please hear us. That our merciful Lord will hear us as we now pray in silence for our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, please hear us. Everlasting and loving God, we thank you for the privilege and the blessings we have received as your children. We pray for the grace of faith, of humble service, and godly life to be worthy of your divine goodness and redeeming mercy in our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come, Together, come, come long, long expected Jesus, Jesus excite in me a wonder at the wisdom and power of your Father and ours. Receive my prayer as part of my service of the Lord, who enlists me in God's own work for justice. Come long expected Jesus, excite in me a hunger for peace, peace in the world, peace in my home, peace in myself. Come, come long expected Jesus, excite in me a joy responsive to the Father's joy. I seek his will so I can serve in gladness, singing and love. Come, come long, long expected Jesus, excite in me the joy and the love and peace it is right to bring to the manger of my Lord. Raise in me too a reverence for the God who acted there. A deep gratitude for the life begun there, and spiritual resolution to serve the Father and the Son. God of light, open our hearts to the mystery of your love and the invitation of your grace. Let our complacency give way to conversion and our judgments to compassionate acceptance of others. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who draws near, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which it is given in human hands of made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever.
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we step into the preface and into the Eucharistic prayer, we pause to pray for the intentions of this morning's Eucharist, for our personal and private intentions that lies in our hearts. We pray for baby Genevin Echo Sophia, who will be baptized this morning. We pray for the parents, godparents. We pray for the sick. We continue to pray for all our frontliners who are at the service of the church, humanity, and society. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so, Father, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with the hosts and power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing. He gave the bread, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, we may become one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her husband, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Faustina and John Paul II and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all clergy and religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
and with your spirit. We'll take a moment to offer that peace to one another. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. The body and the blood of Christ. Jerusalem arise and stand upon the heights and behold the joy which comes to you from God above.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just be seated for a couple of announcements. Just like to begin with the whole experience of the gift of giving. I, I'm just overwhelmed with the amount and the donations that have come into the parish with regards to our outreach mission to the poor, to the migrants, to the homes. It's been really, really beautiful. It took me by surprise personally. Just to let you know that the closing date for this mission, this ministry of outreach will be on the 10th of December. So if you do intend to, to assist us in this mission, in this project, I would encourage you to do it before the tent. Because after the tent, we'll close the accounts, we'll close the books, and we'll begin to reach out to the areas concerns that we have listed out in the announcements to you. So please, whatever you need to do, do it the needful before the 10th of December. And once again, to all those who have made your contributions and all your offerings, in your love offerings, I thank you from the depths of my heart from the parish. Secondly, in regards to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, as you are aware, we are still in the midst of this wilderness. Um, the parish is opening its doors, and I'm making myself available on these two given dates and times, on Fridays between 3 to 6 and on Saturday between 9 to 12 in the morning. I would appreciate if you would call the office to make an appointment so that we can be able to know the number of people that are coming at a given hour. So it's between Fridays and Saturday at 3 to 6 and from 9 to 12. Finally, I was hoping, hoping to make the announcement for Mass Times table for Christmas. But it looks like we are back into the wilderness. So just ask you to be patient like Peter encourages us today to be patient to be patient and hopefully when the time comes I will make known the mass time for Christmas and New Year just take care and stay safe the Lord be with you and with your spirit. spirit bow your heads for God's blessing may the almighty and merciful God by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of the Son in yearn for his coming again, sanctify by the, Christ, the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with the devotion of the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life until he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a blessed week ahead and stay safe. Same, Same to you, Father. Father.